Hi, I'm Drew. I'm a first year student here at Keenan Flagler, focusing on management consulting. I'll be going to McKinsey and Company this summer. And I'm Tony Morash. I'm a second year going to Deloitte full time up in the McLean office, and I intern there as well. The case we're going to do today is called Capital Investment for Utility out of the Darden Casebook. It's an interviewee led case, which is a, a good practice. Uh, for us to get ready for, for firms such as Bain and some of the others as well. The reason why I have Drew doing this case is you'll notice some of the things he does particularly well is to solve the case with the interviewer. So really to put his paper down, to have a conversation about um, the particulars of the case. And he's particularly good at sharing his thoughts too as he goes along, as you'll see with this. So as you said, capital investment for utility. So Drew, uh, major East Coast vertically integrated and re regulated electric utility has received a permit to build its first nuclear power plant. It's come to us to assess whether this will be a good investment and the possible risks associated with this venture. Okay, um, so just to summarize, the firm that's coming to us, they're an East Coast vertically integrated utility firm, right? Correct. And this is their first power plant that they're doing. First nuclear power First plant. nuclear power yeah, plants. Right. So what, what industry are they currently in right now? They're, they're an electric utility okay. that, that is in uh, coal power. Just coal power? Yeah, they're, so they're all coal. So they have about 9,000 gigawatt hours of coal power now that, they, that they're working with. Okay, and I assume that's probably East Coast as well, most coal industry. Right. Yeah, okay. so they're gonna stay in the same grid when yep. they replace it, but that's, yep. that's ultimately the Just the industry shift. That's right. Yeah. And now vertically integrated, can you just describe that to me real quick? Like vertically integrated, we're talking, they're responsible for everything? They are. It, Short of the coal coming into the plant, once the once they take ownership of the coal, they own generation of power and then transmission and distribution. Too. Okay. So they own the power lines all the way down to the house level. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so they sound like a pretty big company. Do we know um, maybe like a market cap they currently have? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. Their, their market cap's about $6 billion, okay. which is uh, pretty significant for utility, but that's a good question. Okay. Um, well, I think I have enough information right now. If I just have a few moments to try to get some ideas down, and then walk you through kind of you know how I want to address the risk they're looking at for this project. Sure, sounds good. Okay. Okay. You know, so this sounds really interesting to me that they're staying in the energy function, but that it's completely new type. You know, they're doing coal power now, they're doing, looking to move into nuclear energy. That's a pretty big change. Sure. So, you know, the first thing I really want to look at is the firm itself. How does it going to face these risks? You know, there's going to be a lot of things associated with coming on with the new technology, mm -hmm. not just the costs associated, but the knowledge they're actually going to need to have. Okay. So, you know, kind of the capital for that. Sure. So, we'll look at the market itself. You know, right now is a really interesting time for nuclear energy in the United States and elsewhere as we look to alternative forms of power for coal. So, is this being pushed by the government? Are they being forced into this? What other competitors are at play? Sure. What's the size growth of this market as sure. well? And you're going back to that main point we want to talk about is the risks. There's a lot of risk involved in this. There's a lot of risk with regulation. There's a lot of risk with time. There's a lot of risk with just safety in general. Right. There's a lot of things I really want to look at here. But I think the first focus really needs to be on the firm itself. Sure. So are they planning on doing anything with their old business or they want a complete transfer? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. They're, they really want to replace almost one for one that business. Okay. You know, as we talked about, it's it's a pretty regulated space. And so mm -hmm. those, those 9,000 gigawatt hours of demand is essentially reserved for our client. And so you can almost treat it like a monopoly yeah. within those 9,000. Okay. Um, let me let me take a, a step back for just a second to ask you a little bit more about what you meant by firm kind of capabilities. Mm -hmm. so you said it's a different space. Talk to me a little bit about yeah. what so, you're thinking about. You know, I don't know much about the coal industry. Um, I had a family history of it in West Virginia, but you know that ended with my <laughs> grandpa. <laughs> sure. But you know, I know it's a very blue collar industry. It's right. very manufacturing based. So what you know the problem is when you're taking the coal out you need to transfer it to a material that's a composite you can actually use for energy. And that's where a lot of the brunt work is done. Right. I imagine moving to nuclear power is a little more technical than that. Sure. So sure. one thing I'd be concerned on if they're looking to replicate one for one, but they're gonna have to replicate a lot of different things. The workers, your baseline workers, are you gonna bring in outside consultants to show how this new technology should be set up, how right. it needs to be set up, 
how many experts are you going to have to bring in to get the centrifuge sure. spinning? You know, is this cold water based? Is this warm water based nuclear power? A lot of different things you need to look at here. Yeah. So we're going to need a team to go in and look at the site location. Do we already have a site picked out? Or you know, just those type of things. I think there's a lot of front end work here with a firm of six billion dollars. It sounds big, but moving into the nuclear power plays, I think that should be our first thing we want to look at is what is this cost going to be for our firm? And can we even afford to do it? Okay. I think that's a I think it's a really good point, and I I'm glad you highlighted sort of the big changes in the business model because mm -hmm. that's I think something that we want to keep coming back to. But you asked about cost, and I think that that's that's a good place to start. So I'm going to show you an exhibit now that uh, gives you what the construction quote for this plant is. So like we said, okay, we're, yeah. gonna build, we're gonna build one. We're gonna outsource it, obviously, because we're not gonna build it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And this that you're gonna see on the chart is the yeah. um, the quoted cost. Yeah. So the breakdown you have here is you know that technology cost we were talking about at four billion, the structure cost itself, two billion, and then total overhead for one billion. I imagine that's getting new workers down there, setting up kind of an HR function maybe, yep. on site safety, I'm sure there's lots of regulations with that. For sure. So the quoted cost is seven billion. So over here on the right, you have the, you know, the risk of cost overrun. A project like this for the first time, if they're doing it themselves, or even if somebody else is coming in, they've never actually had this transference, it's gonna be expensive. Sure. It's probably gonna overrun. So we have the estimated overrun of 800 million, 600 million, 250. Um, you know, so I, I think a way I'd wanna approach this is I'd want to build in the predicted cost overrun right. with that percentage. You, know, you have a 50% um, risk of cost overrun, another 50% and 20%. So if you just give me a second, I'll average these out, try to get the total cost. Sounds good to me. I mean, so we're looking at a total quoted cost of seven billion and a risk overrun cost of seven hundred fifty million. Sounds about right. Yeah. So when looking at that, seven hundred seven point seven five billion dollars for this one project it gives me a great cost for concern because you just told me my market cap is six billion dollars. Sure. Sure. So unless I'm able to increase my market cap drastically with this, you know, that's it's a huge cost for concern right off the bat. So right. I think the direction I want to move now is now that I know the actual cost of the project, let's figure out. Maybe how long it's going to take me to pay back? Sure. Where am I going to be my financing options for that? Right. And you know, I guess one question I should have asked earlier too is: this a public-private company? How yeah, it's, it's a private company. Okay. And sure. I think that'll bounce yeah. through, your, through your discussion. So before you take me to your your payback period, which I think mm -hmm. is a good way to go, yeah. talk me through the financing options first. Just to, yeah. as you said, six billion market cap, seven and three quarter billion. Yeah. It, something's off there. So talk no, absolutely. So looking at those amounts, if it's a six billion dollar utility company, they probably don't have that much cash on hand to pay for everything, even the overrun. So let's say they want to do one hundred percent financing option. Well, then you know where are we going to get it from? If it's seven point seven five billion dollars. You're looking at you know institutional investors, and you're looking at bank financing. Right. So. The hindrance I'd have with that is, you know, the big financing, if it's a utility company, they may want a faster payback than utility companies usually draw. Sure. You know, utility companies are set up for this long-term demand. Right. I know when looking at previous firms, you know, sometimes they judge it in 10-year and 20-year marks based off the city's power that's going to be sure. there. Sure. You know, what local businesses are pulling from. And a lot of this business, too, is that you can't actually start to recover your mm -hmm. costs until the project's done. Absolutely. So I think you're on Yeah, you're and on we'd want to look at the plant's capacity, too. So anybody who's going to finance this firm, if they know they're only going to get $500 million out of this utility company, well, getting that $7.75 <laughs> billion back is going to take a long time. Yeah, and, exactly. know, I think we're all aware banks don't like that as yeah, much. They want a quick exactly. dollar. Um, so I really want to look at the private financing again, but I'd also want to look at maybe if we can judge the payback period and see how much we're actually going to make from this per yeah. year. I think that's a good good spot to go. So what okay. information would you need for that? Um, well, I know you said before that they do 9,000 gigawatt hours. That's that right. Gigawatt okay. hours, yeah. And they expect to do a similar amount with this new plan? Yeah, they do. They're going to do about 8,760 gigawatt right. hours, which is, uh, you can treat it as one for one. It's not okay. exactly, but you can, you can treat yeah. it as 240 units of as waste, but it's, it's going to be in the same units, gigawatt hours. Yeah. Okay. And then with those gigawatt hours, I guess we probably want to look at, you know, the cost that we have now of producing one gigawatt hour and the cost we're going to have at this new plant of producing a gigawatt hour. Sure. And we don't, we're not sure what we're doing now. And okay. If only, if only to say that we need to replace it. Yeah. yeah. So okay. we're not concerned Absolutely. about that. But the, the new variable cost per unit is going to be about ten dollars per megawatt hour. Okay. And that's going to include everything from you know our fuel cost, uh, our our other variable costs of operation mm -hmm. that we have to build, in, build into it. Right. It's about ten dollars per unit. Okay. Per you said that's our variable cost. That's our variable cost. That's right. Do we happen to know our fixed cost yet? 
So we, when we we think about break even, talk to me about that that the rest of the equation. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So when looking at the break even point, the way I want to approach is I want to look at I want to take out my variable cost, mm -hmm. right? So I want to look at what my fixed component is going to be, yeah. and I want to look at the amount of hours that I'm actually going to produce from it. And what you can do from there is you really judge that with the time. Once yeah. you add in the time, you're able to get the total cost of your project. Right. So with that 7.75 million, I, I think we really need to work now on finding the fixed cost. And once we have that, we can pull this break even number of that, you know, it's really been on my mind about whether or not we should go through with this project. Sure. Sure. So what I'm, what I'm going to ask you to do on this one is let's treat the 7.75 billion as our fixed cost. Okay. Right. So that's as in break even terms, how much over how many years am I going to need a profit number to cut that in half? So yeah, treat absolutely. that as your fixed cost for this equation. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take that 8760 gigawatt hours. And then I'm gonna take, and we, we said we didn't have the fixed cost yet, right? We do, yeah, so, so take fixed, fixed cost out of this, but I yeah. wanna, to add to your to data sheet here, um, we have a fixed price that we're allowed to charge. Mm -hmm. It's a bit regulated at $80 per megawatt hour. Okay, perfect, yeah. So Okay, so from that, I'm gonna take that 80, subtract out that variable cost, and that's yeah. gonna give me that. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so just give me a couple more seconds here. On this so side. you put 70,000, I think you're right, but tell me how you got to that. Well, I got to it with the gigawatt hours that we're right. doing okay. with, right? So, I mean, again, very little utility knowledge, but sure. you had to transfer that thousands. <laughs> yeah. You know, exactly. So you add up to, you times it by the 10, or sorry, you times it by the thousand, and that gives you where we're at. Perfect. Okay, so again, we're just looking for the time. That's going to be our break-even point. Mm -hmm. So when you take the 8760, multiply it by that 70,000 yep. that we're looking at, it's going to give you. You mind if I just round a little bit on this? Oh right? yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, it's yeah. going to give you a little over 600, about 610 million. You said that total cost. Again, I'm I'm putting that cost overrun into the actual process. Here. I want worst case scenario. I want what is absolutely yeah, the cost. Makes is. sense for sure. Yeah, we're going to divide that. Carry my zeros here. So we're looking between, so it looks like the actual time this is gonna to take to pay back, it's gonna be between 12 and 13 years. Yeah, that sounds about right. So so to kind of recap, which I think you've done it all right, is $610 million in annual profit right. gives us about 12 and a half years to pay back. So what do you think? I mean, again, I, I'm going back to how I'm gonna get financing for this. Sure. You know, for me, it's, there's some other things I'd want to look at here. If I'm looking at, you know, you said, this is 12 and a half years here to pay this back. Well, if I'm approaching a bank and I say, hey, it's a regulated industry, we're not sure on the exact expansion of the market. We have some market research, but we're not exactly positive on that. But I'm looking to finance a project that is, you know, 15% larger than my current market cap company. Right. By the way, it's going to take close to 13 years on a best case scenario to repay that. Right. They're probably going to look at me very strangely. Sure. They're probably going to wonder, maybe there's a way I can lower that. Well, okay, well, if I can lower that payback period, the cost, let's assume I can bring down the cost. Okay. Because looking at this, you can't bring down really the gigawatt hours, right? Mm -hmm. You can't bring down the actual fixed cost as much. Right. Maybe the variable cost with some experience, knowledge you gain, but you're not going to have that up front. So the and only even thing. When you look at the scale of what you could do, right? You're only talking. It's not much. Yeah, you're not going to move the needle. needle. Right. And so, I mean, Maybe I can make the plant for cheaper, but there's some things I'm going to be sacrificing there. I can't sacrifice anything with safety. It's a highly regulated industry, like you right. said. Right. So I have certain standards I have to meet. Um, you know, I can't sacrifice on location. There's only certain areas approved for nuclear power. Sure. You know, I'm not going to sacrifice on the workers I bring in because then I'm not going to make as much. Right. And if I build it smaller, then I'm limiting my capacity. Right. It's so, circular then, right? Yeah. It just, it just, it just, it just, you know, if I'm robbing Peter, I'm paying Paul. It's, it's back <laughs> exactly. to that argument. Exactly. And so, you know, going forward with this. It, I'd be very wary if I was financing myself. Yeah, and let me let me give you a little bit more information to give you context. The industry average for nuclear mm -hmm. uh, facilities is about seven years payback. Yeah, as well. So your intuition's right. It it seems high. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot going on. And as we talked about, you can't recover your uh, your costs until the plant's functional. And mm -hmm. so we're talking about a building period, and then mm -hmm. another thirteen years on top of that. Absolutely. So I think your I think your intuition is kind of right. So where where would you want to go from here? Yeah. Um, well, going from here, I mean, I know the cost, I know my payback. I know that I'm moving into a new industry. I think now is the time I'd want to approach the board and kind of give my recommendation. Okay. You know, we, 
we've tried to look for a different project for a reason. Maybe it's because we see the writing on the wall with the coal industry. Sure. Maybe we need to come up with some other ideas on maybe different business models we can attach right. in there. Whether that's you know stripping down our assets, selling them off, trying to move into maybe a less capital intensive industry sure. might be an option. But um, if you give me a couple of seconds, I'd like to gather all this. And yeah, because you, you kind of got to a good spot really quickly, and I like that. So I want you to actually, instead of jumping to the recommendation, I want you to talk me through this bucket, which mm -hmm. is the risk Absolutely. bucket. I want you to, to draw me out a little bit further. Let's have a quick brainstorm yeah. about the risks. Make sure we got everything on paper. Make sure it's exactly what, we, what we're anticipating. Mm -hmm. um, and share with me your, kind of your thoughts as you go. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm, I'm just imagining a nuclear power plant right now. Whenever you drive by them, they're very, very guarded features. They're usually removed, kind of remote. So the first thing I'm looking at is, you know, the risk of an accident. Okay. If you have an accident here, I mean, I think we, I wasn't even born yet, but I know Three Mile Island. Right. You know, um, it sticks with you. Sure. Most people are aware of the firm that was running it at the time. So you have a brand recognition problem here. Sure. You know, you think you're vilified in the coal industry. Well, imagine if you have a nuclear accident. And the other thing, risk-wise, I'm looking at after the safety is I'm looking at the actual personnel. I'm in one industry. That is, it's the same bucket, but it's doesn't even seem really close. Sure. So I may be able to keep the same management, yeah. but I'm not going to be able to keep the same line supervisors, the same sure. R&D department, the same safety facilitators, and probably not even a lot of the same day-to-day -day workers. So I think that's a risk too. It is. And, and so do you think, give me a sense of, if you know, mm -hmm. scale from a numbers perspective and from a skill, skill, I'll give you three. Numbers, skill, and cost. Yeah. Coal versus nuclear mm -hmm. in terms of labor. What do you think? Compare those for me. Compare. I'm even going to ask you a little bit further. Almost compare this, the value chains for me, the mm -hmm. supply chains, and tell me why they're so different. We've talked a lot about it in the structure. I just want to come back to it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think the structures are completely different with coal. You know, it's a, like I said, it's much more blue collar. It's much less capital intensive on the manufacturing side right. at the beginning. At, at the end, there's more of a transport cost, more right. of a volume push. Whereas the nuclear energy, you're lucky because you're subsidized by government transference of that product. Right. Um, but the thing is, it's not. It's much more capital intensive in the beginning for the nuclear energy. Yep. Getting built up to speed, getting the skilled labor built up to speed. I'm not sure how many nuclear engineers there are for this. That's um, you know, I'm probably gonna have to pay a premium if I'm getting people coming out of the military or someplace where they had that quick knowledge, that institutional learning, right. or if I'm bringing them from abroad. I'm also not sure, you know, I think the other thing we wanted to talk about was the full supply chain of it. Yeah. They're very different, you know, with coal, not only are you pulling it from the ground there, you're going to move that 10 miles down the road to a, a factory where it's then going to be put on rail systems and distributed throughout the United States, whereas nuclear energy, everything's concentric to that one plant, right. and then it's sent out from there in its energy form. But then you also have more of a waste disposal issue. How are you going to transfer that? Do you have a site located? Do you have yeah. approval for that? I mean, you can go all day. It's just a spider web effect here. They don't line up. Yeah. You know, these no. things don't line up. The core capabilities of the coal, the coal miner are getting that actual raw product out, yeah. right? Getting it into an energy form as quick and as cheaply as possible. That's right. where they're making their margins. I think a lot of the things you've highlighted, to, to be frank about it too, are uh, not enhancements or uh, synergies. These, yeah. are, these are extra costs. These are extra about, costs. Extra labor, extra capital investments. So I think Absolutely. you're thinking around in that. Any other risks that we're kind of missing here before we wrap up? Yeah, I think there's a risk with shutting down the factory you're at already. Okay. If it's not in the same town, then a lot of the workers aren't going to come. Um, it's a very unionized industry, so you might have to have a lot of pension buyouts from those people who are unwilling to come or that you're laying off sooner. Mm -hmm. And then you're also going to have a premium on the personnel you bring in. Right. Um, getting them up to speed, getting them bought into the corporate culture. You know, I know it doesn't seem like a big, you're going from energy to energy, but you're going from the energy, get your hands dirty type to the energy, I want a robot in there because it's so dangerous. <laughs> sure. These are completely different cultures you're going to have to create in here from a low tech to a high tech. Totally so that's right. another risk, kind of losing who they are at their core. Right. Um, and then the final risk is just going back to that giant capex we're looking at. Uh, that's just something that stuck out from that first number, right. getting the financing involved with that. Um, so I guess I'd really put that into actual outside safety regulations, that huge risk, the right. personnel risk you, you're involved in, and then the project itself. Is there a uh, loaded question? I should ask, not, not ask the yes or no questions. Talk to me about social risk. Mm -hmm. Social in a, you can take it however you want. To, yeah. But Absolutely. Well, going back to like, you know, the Three Mile Island, yeah. that was the last time that I think since then no nuclear plants have been approved to be built in the United States. Yeah, it's, it, and more have closed, right? Yeah. So I mean, right. You're, you're generally thinking the right way anyway. Yeah. And so if more have closed, is this an industry that's vilified for a correct reason or is it something you can even overcome? Mm -hmm. You know? I know the military is 
okay with people going into submarine with nuclear power, but we're not okay putting it outside of a major city. Yeah. We're not okay putting it outside of a place where those skilled workers maybe want to live. Yeah. Maybe they're going to go into a different industry. Um, the social responsibility is huge right now. Yeah. You know, people are trying to lower their energy costs, their carbon footprint and everything. And a nuclear plant just isn't the way to do it at times. People are scared of it. Um, even though it's old technology, I don't think they think it's proven technology yet. Yeah, it's an interesting way. It's a dichotomy of mm -hmm. knowing what is environmentally sound and what's what you right. see in the headlines, yeah. which I think is a good challenge for the company is exactly like you mentioned, if your brand is associated with Three Mile Island, you, you want you want to be the Duke Energy who has burning mm -hmm. clean nuclear fuel and right. not coal up in the environment. No, absolutely. But it's a, it's a tough thing for the business model. It is, and it's tough one, especially, you know, you said they were East Coast operated and they're trying to stay on the East Coast. Well, mm -hmm. there's very few areas next to water which you need to have for nuclear power yeah. that aren't population heavy. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's very exactly. few. So you're looking maybe tidal waters, you're maybe down in Georgia, mm -hmm. Florida, and again, a lot of environmentalists are focused in there trying to rehabitat the land. It's very be very difficult to get approved for that. It is a, it's a tough social environment for sure. Um, I think that that, barring any other things you want to talk about from a risk perspective, mm -hmm. I think that that's all kind of I wanted to talk about. So okay. feel free to take a, a minute and we'll go to uh, talk to the CEO for, with our recommendation. Okay. All right, so we were brought in to look at the risks associated with this project. Looking at the risk, we just discovered that it's gonna cost $7.75 billion to build it. Mm. Looking at that, we're a $6 billion market cap company, and it's gonna take us 13 years, best case scenario, to actually pay back this. Mm -hmm. So I recommend we don't go through with it. I think we're gonna have a very difficult time finding actual financing for this. I think that there's too many social programs and too much of a popular culture rant against nuclear energy right now. The market is completely unsure demand-wise. It's a highly regulated industry, so we're going to be tough on any expansion we can do within there. Mm -hmm. You know, that 7.75 may be the cheapest we can actually build this for. Sure. Some things I'd want to look at, though, is I want to look at our current core capabilities. You know, you said we control everything within our realm about the distribution of the coal. Maybe we can build a new business model working on our distribution networks, working sure. on our railroad expansion, and really move from there. But as far as this project is concerned, I think there's too many externality years at play, and I don't like the payback period for it. I agree. Uh, I want to just kind of prod you to, to argue the other way. Mm -hmm. Tell me tell me why this is a bit unique, and that if you saw a payback period like that, you could argue it's long, it's twice the industry average, but we can deal with it. Mm -hmm. Can Can you come up with a good argument? On the other side, it has to be one second. Yeah, of course. So if I were to argue for it, a couple of things I think that you could argue with are the reason the payback period is nearly twice is because what we're actually doing is we're building a facility with more capacity than normal. We're building a facility to handle an expanding market area or population focused, you know, maybe this is going to be south of Wilmington, an area that's really growing, and that's the market we're going to serve. Sure. And it also is going to be more efficient. We're the first one to be built in X amount of years. Nuclear energy's come a long way since then. Right. So not only are we going to be more efficient and have more capacity, but we're going to be safer. We're going to be safer, we're going to be very open and have a nice dialogue with the community that we're in right. about the jobs we're going to provide, the technology areas we're going to bring in with supporting businesses from contractors or other engineering firms that need to support us. Mm -hmm looking at our economic impact that we're gonna have there. You know, maybe we can get more tax breaks from being there for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. I think that's why you're seeing the higher price, and I think that is why, um, you know, you should approve this financing. Yep, it's a good good, uh, good job looking at it from the other side, because I think, you know, as we wrap up here, there's a sure demand. It's mm -hmm. for better or for worse. As you yeah. said, you can't expand it, but if that's ours to have, uh, there's an understanding that nuclear is gonna take a long time to come back. 
that that could be for 30 years. And no, 30 could. years times 610 million is not bad. No, right? it could be. And there's other things at play here politically. I mean, maybe there's now going to be an allowance for grid setback. Yep. You know, you're looking at that with solar power right, right. now. Florida doesn't even allow it, the Sunshine State. So maybe, you know, we can revolutionize everything here with this. But no, we're, we're, yeah. we're disrupting as we go. Great job. Absolutely. Thank you.